Folks, good morning. I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, this week I've been studying over in the book of Luke, kind of preparing for Old Fashioned Day. And let me tell you something you do not want to miss September the 18th. There's some things that's going to happen that the people will be talking about, and you do not want to miss that. So I was studying over there this week, and some scriptures just literally jumped off, well, not literally, but they jumped off the page in front of me. I've read it several times, but they was just two or three different thoughts that just really grabbed my attention this week. So if you'll turn with me over to Luke, the fifth chapter, and we're going to read a few verses here this morning, and I'm going to try to share with you what God has put in my heart. So Luke chapter 5, starting with verse 1, if you would stand with me when you find that. Everybody got it? Amen. Amen. All right, here we go. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon Jesus to hear the word of God, he stood by Lake General Surat and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. Verse 3, And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and asked him that he would thrust out a little from the land, and Jesus sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, Jesus said unto Simon, Launch into the deep and let down your nets. It's amazing that they put the title to my message right there in the scriptures. I, don't, I think that is so amazing that, that, that they did that. Verse number 5, And Simon answered him, Master, we have told all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net brake. And they beckoned unto their partners, which on the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both of the ships, so they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinner man, O Lord. Peter was astonished at all that were with him at the draught of fishes which they had taken. And also was James and John, the son of Zebedee, which were the partners of Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed Jesus. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, our prayer this morning, God, is that you'd anoint our pastor with a mighty outpouring, Lord. Lord, I pray this morning, God, for conviction of the Holy Ghost today. Lord, let every heart feel this. Lord, let it burn deep within us. Lord, let this word come alive in our hearts. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So this morning, I'm going to talk to you about letting down your nets. There was three different passages through there that God kind of spoke to my heart as I was reading it through. But this is the one as I prayed about it and as things is going on this week, we have had a pretty rough week. Or we woke up Friday morning, we had about two or three inches of water throughout the whole house. So the water heater decided to go away and, and uh, somebody, when they installed the water heater, Whoever it was back in those days did not put a cutoff valve on it, so water was just running through it, and we cut it. So we ran out here, and the trees and the mud down in the road, we ran out here to cut that water off, and it hadn't been cut off in so long. I guess the pressure built up and blew the little PVC valve, so we had water shooting up in the parking lot. We had water run out the carport. So uh, I said, God, you're just going to have to touch me because I'm going to have to get this water up. So we found out last night that the closet off of the living room was also full of water. We didn't realize that. So now the whole carpet in the living room, one side of the living room is soaking wet. So I don't know what all we're going to do. The baseboards is wet. Uh, but uh, so far, we have not had a great week till I got to church this morning. Amen. Amen. 
So we are, we've had some difficulties. My shoulders is sore. My back is aching. And uh, I, I, just, I just think I got way too hot with all that I was doing. But you know what? God is still the one that will give us strength to do what we have to do. Amen. He's the one that will never leave us. He's the one that will always be with us no matter what. We know that this old body is going to fall apart. We know we're going to have aches. We're going to have pains. We're going to have shoulder problems. We're going to have back problems. We're going to have kidney problems. We understand that. This body was designed like some of the old, uh, <clears throat> I started to say General Motors cars, but so, like some of the old cars that, that was designed planned obsolescence. It was designed to go away. This was a temporary tent, but one day I'm going to move into a permanent home. Amen. So uh, I know God is going to give us the strength that we need to do what we have to. This morning I want to talk to you about God, Jesus, walking down the ramp to get on Peter's boat. Now, a little note for you here. Let me, if I can show with you the note that let you understand what we're talking about. The scripture keeps talking about a boat and about a ship, but really what we're talking about is your life. Every time the scripture says boat and Jesus entered to his boat, we're talking about Jesus entering into your life. Okay, so the boat is the life. So a lot of people will let Jesus come up the ramp and he stands at the door of your boat and knocking, trying to get you to open the door and receive him in because the Bible says it's his will that none should perish. He gave his only begotten son so that everyone can have eternal life that would accept him. And Tommy stands knocking on the door trying to get people to let him in. But Peter opened the door and let him come on into the ship. He let him have the ability to take over the ship and become the captain, the master of that ship but there are people that refuse to let God have his way there are people that refuse to let God into their life they're so busy with their party life they're so busy with their social life they're so busy with their business that they don't have time for God but let me tell you something this morning folks they're going to come a day that you're going to wish that you had time for God and that day is so, so close, so close. Peter accepted Jesus into his life with no questions asked. He walked in and it just, Jesus just took over the ship. For some of us, we refuse to let God have his way in our life. There's some people that says, well, I go to church on Sunday morning. Isn't that good enough? No, that's not good enough. Because God has got to be completely in charge of your life. He is absolutely everything or he is absolutely nothing. He does not play the partial game of where you can keep one foot in the world and one foot serving God. We have truly got to decide that is Jesus the master of our ship? Is he in control? That means there's no conditions. There's no blackout days. There's no reservations. It's absolutely I am following Christ or your other choice is I'm following the devil. There is no third option. It is one or the other one side or the other. If you want to have a successful career living for God and serving God here, let me tell you, you are not going to be invited to some of the most popular parties. Let me tell you something. If you want to serve God, you're not going to be invited to the elite social clubs. Let me tell you something else, folks. You're probably going to laugh, be laughed at. You're going to be scorned. You're going to be made fun of if you want to serve God because the Bible says that you will be made fun of you will be scorned at why is that because the world hated Jesus and honey they're going to hate anybody that loved him Amen. which is it going to be for you are you going to serve God or are you going to serve the devil 
They're the only choice you have. I've added in one word to James 4 and 7. Because if you want to overcome the devil, you have got to completely submit yourself unto God. 100%. Nothing held back. You have got to give yourself therefore to God. We do not have the power to overcome the devil. But I know when we give ourselves to God and we fully trust him, it says that there is a comforter that will come and fill us. And the power of God that lives in us. In Philippians 4.13, it says that I can do all things with Christ that strengthen me. And you will have the power to resist the temptation. You will have the power to overcome the devil. You will have the power to live for God if you will completely give yourself to Christ. There's a lot of people that wants the power to come to over, uh, overcome the devil. There's a lot of people that comes to church. There's a lot of people that don't have license with different denominations. They just independently want to go out and start churches and they want to preach and they want to bring people in and they want to tell them anything that they want to hear just to fill up the house. They have turned this religious in- program into a slanderous, uh, cheating gospel of where they only want you to come in and bring their money. <clears throat> People living in uh, fourteen million dollar houses, and and I and you know let me tell you, I don't that, that don't bother me as much as the fact is what they're telling the people. It's okay, no matter what you do. We're gonna have we're we're want to rewrite the Bible because the Bible doesn't live up to them today's standards, honey. Let me tell you, the Bible will never live up to today's standards. What we've got to do is change our standards to live up to the Bible. Amen. And that's the reason you don't see. 20,000 people in here this morning standing in the park lot trying to hear because the world is looking for somebody with itching ears that's going to tell you what they want you to hear. They're going to tell you things that makes you feel good. But honey, let me tell you, I'm going to have to stand before God one day and I'm going to have to be held accountable for did I tell you the truth? Did I tell you the things that you need to know? Did I prepare my sheep to come before the slaughter? Did I set you right and give you a foundation to stand on? And honey, let me tell you something. I wish we had many people that would hear the message. I wish we had plenty of people could hear it. But the one thing that's important to me is I've got to do what God tells me to do. And that is to teach you the Word of God. <laughs> Folks, let me tell you something. There's a lot of people that would love to have the power. There was a lot of people that would give anything they had to possess the power of some of the old time evangelists that had. T.L. Lowry going around and, and when I lived in Cleveland, Tennessee back 50 something years, 50 something years ago, T.L. Lowry would come, so I worked at the funeral home and T.L. Lowry would come sit in my office while the, fun- while the family was making arrangements and then he'd go in and have prayer with them. So I got to know him fairly well, but I didn't understand all the ministry that he had in the people's lives that he had touched over the years and the churches that he had brought forth. Let me tell you, some of these old-time pioneers, uh, Brother Collins has, has went out and hacked his way through this old world and set up some things that we're enjoying. He's paved the road for us today. But there's a lot of people would love to have the power that God gives them, but they don't want to live the life to give get it let me tell you something you can never possess the power of God until you turn loose of the world you can never possess the power of God until you dismiss everything that's in your life that you had when you came to you cannot serve two masters as hard as people tries to come to church and they try to look like they're part of the team and they try to do this and they want to go there and they they do a lot of people but on monday they want to go back and dress like the world they want to talk like the world they want to fit into the world and they wonder why in the world isn't god blessing me why in the world isn't god blessing me well i went to church two or three weeks ago I don't know why, Sister Doris, that, he's, that that I'm not getting all these blessings. I mean, I show up every now and then. What's, what's the big deal? 
I, matter of fact, one Sunday I stayed all the way to the end. <laughs> Folks, let me tell you, either you're sold out to God or you're sold out to the world. And you can never possess the power of God until you turn loose of the world. See, the devil has his own area. The devil has his people. And I want to tell you something this morning. A lot of church people give the devil a whole lot more credit than he's due. You say, the devil kicked me in the side. The devil hit me down. Honey, the devil cannot touch a child of God. If the devil touches a child of God, he's got to cross the bloodline to get to you. If you're covered by the blood of God, the devil cannot touch you. All that he can do is tempt you with lies. And I put this in the bulletin two or three times. But if you follow the devil, he didn't lead you. You followed him because of your own choosing. He tempts you and you choose to follow him. But there's a bloodline that separates good and evil. There's a bloodline that separates the world today. There's a bloodline that the devil cannot cross to get to you. But let me tell you something, folks. Here's the shocking news. God stands ready and willing to receive you. But you have to come to him come on did you get that god is not going to reach over into this sinful life that you're living cross the bloodline the other way go down into the hell where you're camping out and pick you up by the collar and drag you back across the line with you kicking and screaming i don't want to go i don't want to go god is never going to make you do something you're not willing to do and he is not willing to come after you you have to go to him why is that Because if he come after you, you may not be ready to give up everything that you've been tied to and everything that you've done. But honey, when you come to him, you got to set it all down and say, God, I'm willing to give up my boat. I'm willing to give up my net. I'm willing to give up my ship. I'm willing to give up my business. God, whatever it is, I'm going to serve you. And whatever that means, whatever that takes, I'm going to serve you. Amen. When you get ready... To reach out to him, he is ready to receive you. But you have to be the one that comes to him. And honey, when you come to him, you got to come to him alone. Ouch. See, your husband, your wife, your children, your pastor cannot receive the personal relationship between you and God. Only you only you there's people sitting in this room this morning that they've been faithful to God for years and years and years before their spouse ever decided to come to serve God but because of the life that they lived because of the time that they was faithful because the time they walked out on Sunday morning says I'm going to church if you want to go or not I'm going to church you are not going to stand in the way of me serving God there are people sitting here this morning that because of the life that you lived you set an example that led your spouse to God honey your spouse cannot serve God for you your spouse cannot get forgiveness for the things you've done only you can verse 11 says and they forsook all notice that don't say some notice that don't say everything except my little bit of couple of habits that I've got let me tell you something there are preachers out there today that will tell you it's okay to have a couple of little vices here and there because you've got to be able to spew off some of the pressures and you've got to have something to turn to honey let me tell you something if God is not enough for you to turn to he's not enough to save your soul if God's not enough to turn to in the times of stress and trouble he is not God enough to, to wash your sins away he's not enough God to heal 
heal you. He's not enough God to prepare a place for us to go to. Honey, we cannot hold nothing back. When we come to God, it is we got to give up everything we got. Why is that? Because you'll never, you'll never, you'll never get what God has got for you until you turn loose of what you got yourself. Amen. Pastor, I don't know if I like that. I can't help if you like it or not, but I'm telling you the truth. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. That's exactly the way it's going to be. Your habits has got to leave. Your habits, your customs, the, your attraction to the world and your attraction to the things that holds you down. The pride of life is going to send more church people to hell than anything else. Hold on, Pastor. You've done crossed the line now. This is going to be shocking to some of you, and I'm so sorry. Somebody told me the other day, says, you sound like you don't believe everybody in the church of God is going to heaven. I said, I'm better than that. I don't believe there are people in the Nocatee church of God that's all going to heaven. Why is that? Because there are people show up to do when they want to, when it's convenient for them, but they don't serve God through the week. My Bible tells me that Matthew, that he that endureth to the E N D. He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Honey, what does endure mean? That means you're going to have temptation. That means you're going to have troubles. That means you're going to have trials. But if you're still able to raise your hands and praise God and say, even so, God, Lord, come quickly. Lord, I praise you and everything that you're doing. It may be bad to me, but God, I know if this is your plan, I worship you in your plan. And whatever I've got to do in your plan, God, let it be. But my dear and personal friend, Tony Green, was part of the Singing Green family. We've had Tim here at the church five years ago, I believe it was. When we got him here, his brother passed away. Tony was my, one of my best friends in the world. Tony and Taranda, they just, they just good people. And anywhere we was singing, anywhere close to them, we'd go by and see them, or they's coming through Chattanooga, and we wasn't on the road, they'd stop and by the house, or Diane take a cake and put on their bus. We just loved them. They're good friends. But at Tony Green's, one of his last concerts, we was able to be there also. And they had to hold, put a mic stand in front of Tony. And Taranda stood there, leaning up against him, so that he could stand up. And when they finished singing, they pulled the curtain so nobody could see how bad a shape he was. And they helped him off of the stage. And he went over and sat down in a chair. And I went over and pulled up a chair in front of him. I said, Tony, why do you keep doing this? You know your body does not hold up to this. They had to have a dialysis machine put on their bus. And he would take dialysis and then get off of dialysis and go in and sing. I said, Tony, why do you keep doing this? He said, Brother Lonnie, every time I sing, I pray that God will touch one more soul. I pray that God will touch one more. So, honey, is that your call in life? It's your call in life to do whatever that you have to do to touch one more. So, honey, let me tell you something. If you serve God, it's whole hog in or nothing. Let me give you an example. I don't know about a lot of you, but a lot of times we wake up and Diane says, what you want for breakfast this morning, honey? 
Well, sounds pretty simple to me. How about some bacon and eggs? Cut me a slice of tomato with that and a piece of toast, and man, I'm ready to go. You know, a meal without tomatoes or onions is a waste of time. Did I get any amens back through there? You've got a few amens through the house. You know, for a chicken to lay that egg, it was kind of an inconvenience. The chicken got up early that morning and pumped out that egg and then it went off and played in the, with the ladies day and two o'clock they had a tea and I don't know what all chickens do during the day but her work was done. She done laid the egg. She's happy. Everything's ready to go. Right? Everything's fine. It's just everything, whatever that you typically do. If you hang out with the chickens, I mean, whatever they do, it's okay. I don't know. But honey for the pig is a whole different story. For that chicken, for you to have the egg is an inconvenience. But for the pig to give you the bacon, it was a life commitment. And that's the way a lot of these Christians are today. They want to serve God like the chicken. Now listen to me this morning. They want to serve God when it's just a little, maybe a little inconvenience to you. If there's not a ball game, if there's not somewhere that we can go, a friend of ours invited us to go boat riding and we only can go on Sunday, so we're going to go boat riding on Sunday instead of coming to church. Boy, that's a testimony, isn't it? You know what bothers me? I was talking to a guy when we was out singing on the road. And I said, what caused you to turn your life to God? He said, one night, I was in a nightclub, about half drunk. And all my buddies were sitting around the table and we could see who could drink the most beers and have the biggest party he said, I went out to the parking lot, and while I was sitting there in the car in the parking lot, getting ready to go, there's a wreck at the traffic light at the corner of the parking lot. And he said, it's just like someone threw cold water at my face. God said, you could be next. He said, what really scared me that if... God had come five minutes earlier, I wouldn't have been ready to go. If God had come, if Jesus had returned, the trumpet had sounded five minutes earlier, I wouldn't have been ready to go. Honey, let me tell you something. You don't know when God is coming. And there's a lot of people that wants to serve God when it's convenient. When they don't have anything else better to do, when they don't have anything else better to go, they don't have no more ball games to go see. Everything is okay. Well, I guess we might as well go to church this morning. And you think God is going to honor that? If you do, I'm on the wrong track. But if you want to serve God like the pig, it's the whole hog in. You don't get bacon until the pig gives its life. And honey, you don't serve God unless you want to give your whole self to God. It's totally... And people said, well, two billion people can't be wrong. Why don't you just come on and go with us? The Bible clearly says broad is the way to destruction, but narrow is the gate. Honey... Just because there are two billion of your friends marching their way into hell and their people say, well, I'm going to. <laughs> Where are we going? I don't know. <laughs> but they're going, I'm going to. That's my friends. Wherever they go, I'm going to go because we're tight. We take care of each other. We're, I'm going where the, honey, let me tell you something. When you wake up in flames and the hell is blowing all around you, where's your friends? They may be there too, but they can't help you. 
Ecclesiastes says, so is a tree, fall, so shall it lies. When you open your eyes in hell, there's no return. There's no return. I think let me tell you something. Why are people going to hell? It's the pride of life. People get so accustomed to doing what somebody else is doing. I'm watching so I had a conversation with a person this morning of where they're actually now cartoons. They say they're actually cartoons that's teaching children that the being possessed by the devil is fun. It's the real life. Have the demonic spirit on your life. Have fun or have a real and they got movie stars that's portraying the devil on it. I haven't saw that cartoon yet. I hope I never do, but let me tell you something, folks. The devil is out to destroy you and your family to take your kids to take your life he is trying to destroy you and it's going to take some power of God in your life to stand up to the laws that's being changed the homosexual laws that's coming forth the president seems like everything that they do he ties in something about the homosexual and the gays they will have priority of this and they got to be chosen for that honey let me tell you something you can stand for anything you want to but the only thing is going to keep you out of hell is standing for God. The Bible says even the very elect, very elite will be deceived. How can that be? Well, because all my friends is doing that. What can be wrong with it? What's going to be wrong with it? Because it don't line up with the word. It's what's wrong with it, honey. We don't have time for the ooey-gooey stuff of where everything traps you down and say, that's okay, I will go to church next month, I'll go to church next year. Wow, I've got plenty of time. Every day, every day, every day, there's people stepping off into eternity. 24 years old, 26 years old, 37 years old, Honey, it doesn't matter the age because you're not guaranteed tomorrow. Well, I'm not three score and ten yet, and you may never be three score and ten. That's the average. That's not a guarantee. When I get old, I will serve God. How do you know God will accept you? Ouch. Well, he's a loving God. Yes, he is. But he's also a judge. And his spirit will not always strive with man. Honey, they're going to become a time that you're going to try to come to God. And you may have crossed the line. Amen. Well, I don't like this, Pastor. Let's go find somewhere else. Honey, I'm just going to tell you like it is. Amen. The Bible says today... Not tomorrow, not next week, not after the first of the year. But the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Some people get confused with the first step of coming to the altar and saying, God, forgive me my sins. That will get you covered by the blood. That will get everything wiped clean. But that don't guarantee you a trip to heaven. You understand that? You understand that just gets you on the right path. I've already quoted to you the scripture. I think it's Matthew 24, 13. I believe it is. If you endure to the end of the world, he that endureth the same shall be saved. So there are things you're going to have to go through. There are trials you're going to have to go through. But you've got to hold true to God. Several places in the Bible, it says that uh, come in those that the kingdom of God is for those that works, those that strive for God. We have got to continually do things. We've got to forsake the world. We've got to follow God. And we'll have to fight the devil. But the devil will enter into your life and try to spoil everything that you've stored up. The devil will try to steal and take everything that you've got. And then the devil's going to tell you that it wasn't him that done it, but God is the one that took your child's life. God is the one that made your child do this or that. Honey, the devil was the father of lies. But people is believing the devil more than they're believing God. The devil is telling people that God loves you. Just go and do anything you want to do. He will love you. Well, he does love you. But loving him is the key to get there, not him loving you. Amen. Folks, interesting enough that the first thing that Jesus did when he got on the boat 
was change what was normal. Ouch. Whatever you're normally accustomed to when you find God comes into your life will probably change. Amen. See, he got on the boat and he didn't say, where's the fishing rods? I want to go fishing. Isn't that what you do on boats? Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> we went on a cruise one night and we sat on the boat and we just watched the water until the sun went down. Then we was didn't see anything. <laughs> Some people get on boat and just go pleasure riding. Some people go on boat for sightseeing, to relax. Hey, I've had a rough week this week. Let's just go get on the boat and go ride around a while. But if you'll notice that when God got on the boat, He didn't use the boat for anything that normally boats are used for. He turned the boat into a pulpit and preached the word from the boat. That is to tell you that whatever you got in your life when you find God will probably have to change. Ouch. But I've already got this lined up. Honey, let me tell you something. Give that to God too. Well, I've got this already stored up. Well, just give that to God too. Because the more you give to God, the more God can give back to you. You will never out give God but so many people start the race but not many people is going to finish it because even as difficult as the world is today it's going to get worse it's going to get worse the times are going to get worse the laws are going to get worse it's all getting diff more difficult pastor that's not encouraging it is for me because I know this world it's not my home. Amen. I'm simply passing through. Amen. I'm looking for it. So when God steps on your boat, your plans will have to change. Your agenda has to change. Your purpose in life will have to change. In other words, you might as well get ready for God to take the normal and change it into super normal. Peter followed Jesus complete instruction of his life I'm ready for a new thing when Jesus stepped on Peter's boat he brought him a new plan he brought him a new way a new, matter of fact that was Peter's last fishing trip can you imagine your very last trip it was so big that you had to call for help you got so many fish you couldn't even get them in and then you walk back on land and say, now then I am the king of fishers. I, look what I done. No, you didn't do it. God did it. Amen. But he says, if you're serious about following me, just leave all of this behind. Verse 11 says, they forsake all. The ships, the nets, the business, they walked away. Why would they do that? Because God's eternal plan is better than man's present plan. Amen. And God's got an eternal plan for your life. Just like Peter, I was desperate. I was working for the wrong reasons. I was worshiping the wrong gods. I didn't know how desperate I was. Peter didn't know how desperate or how his life was going to change. But Jesus showed up and walked into his boat, changed everything. And when they walked away, Peter left the boat and said, I want to follow this man. Let me ask you this morning, are you willing to say, God, here I am? But, but pastor, I come to church. What are you talking about? Just because you come to church don't make you a child of God any more than standing in a garage makes you a four-wheel drive truck. Amen. Showing up don't make you a Christian. It's what's inside of your life. You've got to put God first. There's no halfways. There's no partial now, and I'll do something later. There's nothing else. If you want to turn your dry fishing nets into something fruitful, honey, you've got to turn your whole entire life over to God. 
Listen to me this morning. You was born to die. Do you understand me this morning? When I say die, I mean you was born into a world of sin. And one day you reached the age of accountability. You started knowing right from wrong. You, got, you started knowing, well, if I tell this lie, I can get this. When I do that wrong, I'm going to enjoy. You understand right from wrong. And at that point that you understood right and wrong, your life was definitely going to hell. But you had to make a change in your life. But God showed up and said, even though you're sentenced to die, let me go die for you. Even though you're sentenced to eternal hell, let me take care of that sentence for you. But God showed up. God created a plan of salvation. God went to the cross in your place. God went to hell and took the keys to death, hell on the grave. To stoke, to beat the devil up, took everything that it had. Hello, honey, God is still in control. Always has been. But God is there when you need him. But I'm having a rough time. Yeah, I am too. But God is still in control. I've had a rough week. I have to. But God is still who I'm going to serve. Well, what if it gets worse next week? Honey, I'm going to serve God. Because my Bible says in all things, praise ye the Lord. When I get a flat tire right after I call Bobby, I'm going to praise the Lord because that flat tire may have kept me from the wreck down the road. I don't know what the whole plan is, but I know God has got my best interest at heart. Amen. I'm going to trust God. Folks, let me ask you this morning. You cannot go north and south at the same time. Do you understand what I'm saying? You cannot go north and south at the same time, but the devil has convinced you that you can hang on to a little bit of the world and still go to heaven. The world has told so many people, it's okay, you can do that as long as you go to church on Sunday, it's all right. No, it's not. See, I don't know what happened down the road. I don't know if you got hurt. I don't know if a pastor somewhere done something wrong, a preacher stepped on. I don't know what you're hiding in your life. But God gave me this message to tell somebody this morning that you need to turn loose of whatever's holding you back. Whatever it is, you can't go north and south at the same time. And there's people trying to hold on to hurt, to, to grief, to grief, and all the problems that, that goes with the world. You're, you're trying to identify and stay. But you know, there's a line that you're going to have to cross. And you say, I'm a prisoner of two worlds. You're trying to hold on to the world and trying to hold on to God. Let me tell you, it don't work. Somebody hurt my feelings a long time ago. It wasn't God. God has never let you down. God has never left you and He never will. As long as you hold on to His hand, He'll hold on to yours. But God wants to take you to another level. He wants to change your entire life. He wants to change you from being a fisherman to a fisherman of men. Here we are riding around the lake. But God says, let your net down. God is saying, you need to serve me fully, totally, completely. Are you willing to let God take control of your boat this morning? But you don't know what I've been through. No, I don't know what you've been through. But I do know for the fact that if you want to serve God completely, you've got to turn it loose. I don't know how bad you've hurt. I don't know how bad things have gone wrong. I don't know. But I do know 
that God said, if you'll bring your troubles to me, if you'll bring your problems to me, if you'll just turn it all over to me, I'll work out all the problems. I'll work out the solutions. How can God do that? I don't know. I don't know how he created the world by speaking it into existence, but that don't mean I don't trust him. I don't know how he put Adam to sleep and pulled out a rib and made one. I don't know. But it don't mean I don't trust God. I still believe there are women here. I mean, amen. amen. Folks, let me tell you, you don't have to understand the process to serve God. I'm going to ask you this morning just to ask yourself deeply and sincerely is God completely in charge of my boat is there something in my boat God that we we need to throw out God bring it back to my memory this morning because God I want you to be the captain of my boat God I want you to tell me where to let the net down and one of the scriptures there says, I have told all night, Lord, but never the less will upon your word I will do what you say. Are you willing to do what God says this morning? Why don't you just ask God to completely Wipe away anything that you've been holding on to the world. Anything you're holding back to. Anything you're trying to identify with. Honey, let me tell you something. God is the only thing you need to identify with this morning. You need to get your mind made up. That things may go south, but I'm holding on to God. The laws may change, but I'm holding on to God. We may have to start meeting in houses because they closed the church down, but I'm going to still hold on to God. Amen. Whatever the situation is, I'm going to hold on to God. Is your mind made up? Are you that firm? Find your place to pray.